Wanji grabbed my hand in an almost absolute darkness and intertwined his fingers with mine. This is kinda cute! <laughs> It's Jessica and welcome to A Hand in the Darkness. So it's been a while since I've actually played uh, Boys Love or Yaoi Dating Simulator. The last one was Red Embrace and um, this game was given to me by the developer I think a year ago but I forgot that he gave it to me so <laughs> I'm so sorry that this let's play is really late. So I'm gonna read the description of this game in case you guys are wondering what it's about. So, A Hand in the Darkness is a visual novel that is set in a British boarding school in 1910. If you enjoy reading stories, you will certainly love following the four main characters while they bond, struggle to pass their exams, fall in love, dream about the future, cope with their parents' expectations. You will find a lot of friendships, tons of first time falling in love, romance, and thrilling investigation when the boys find out Alex's life is being targeted. That is not cool. Uh, will they find out who is behind Alex's murder attempt? Whoa, that got dark! <laughs> will Alex manage to live up to his fa family expectations? and succeed in entering Cambridge or Oxford? Or will he be too distracted by his love affair to think about his future? So there are three different routes with nine different endings for each of the characters. And obviously Alex is the character that we are going to be playing. I'm not sure which one is Alex, either this kid or this kid over here, don't know. There's a lot of adult themes here, but there's no like lewd CGs, not like Ch Chessa Blade. So if you were looking for that, I'm sorry there isn't any, but there's a lot of cute romantic stuff. So if you're looking forward to that, make sure you stay on this Let's Play. Anyway, if you guys would like to get the game yourself, I'll leave a link in the description along with the developer's other links as well so you can check out the work. Alright, let's get started. St. Michael's Boarding School is a magnificent place, an elegant and traditional school that provides boys from a good background a future of success and excellence. That's what I had been told, but actually I was rather terrified. The sight of those tall old towers made the brick and stone, those paneled windows too similar to those on the church. It was my first time in such a kind of school and I definitely wasn't looking forward to it. That's us! Okay, so he's the brown-haired kid. Got it. Especially when it seems like I was the only guy of my age with a mother crying her eyes out while taking leave. Sure, there were some kids on their first year sobbing and hugging their mother's skirts, but they were 11 years old, not 16 like myself. All the older guys gave a, sh a short hug and to their parents and immediately ran to meet their schoolmates, patting their backs and being generally loud. I felt completely out of place. And to make things worse, the other boys were starting to throw funny glances at my mother and my direction yeah kids can be mean but I, I, i'm just gonna take a while to say that alex's mom hasn't really like sent the you know her son uh, far away or at least a, a period away uh, from her and home so it's understandable but like kids are mean let's just be honest here it doesn't matter if it's high school elementary school whatever kids are just mean man so embarrassing i tried to shrink and melt with the wooden walls of my ancient looking hall or alternatively trying to calm my mother down Please, Mom, I'll be alright, stop crying. But I don't know if I'm ready to face three entire months without seeing you again. We have never been separated for so long from each other. And to my discomfort, her sobs turned louder. My savior appearing in the form of a balding man dressed in grey with a school crest embroidered on his chest pocket. Oh, you must be a new student. Please let me guide you to your bedroom. Your name is Alex White. Yes, yes, I have it noted down somewhere. I'm Wilson, the housemate. So if you need anything, like an additional blanket, another lamp, or an uh, application for leaving the school, just look for me. I nodded and grabbed my suitcase. I wish I felt more at ease. After all, the man was being really kind. It was not stern type I was expecting. But I couldn't help but feeling tense with my mother by my side and all the racket in the hall, with the boys and parents lo talking loudly and rushing past us. The man headed towards the main corridor and I started to follow him. My mother then attempted to follow us, but Wilson turned to stop her with an apologetic smile. I'm sorry, ma'am, but uh, relatives are not allowed inside the building. But do not fret, I will accompany Mr. White to his bedroom and make sure he makes himself at home. He patted my shoulder with a big smile. And I'm sure this young man will write home very soon, won't you? I nodded at once, wanting to make my mother feel more at ease. I really didn't want my last sight of her for months to be of her face contorted in sadness like right then. She seemed a bit calmer, but then suddenly embraced me tightly. Please write as soon as possible. Your father couldn't come today, but you know how nervous he was as well. I will, don't worry. Well, come on then. Come on, Mr. White, follow me. 
I distangled myself from my mother's arms and grabbed my suitcase again, waving goodbye to her. The year was 1910, and my new life was about to start. I I, I don't know why. I, I, maybe I'm just, like, stereotyping because, you know, like, uh, it's a British boarding school. I just imagine, like, we're going to Hogwarts. <laughs> Oh, God. Anyway, Wilson led me to my bedroom, which I was able to share with three other students, and after showing me which one of my bed, uh, which one was my bed and my wardrobe, he also told me that the door in front of our bedroom was the study room for my year mates. As soon as he left, I started to unpack my stuff and placing my clothes in the hanger inside the wardrobe. Okay, I don't know exactly what kind of voices I'm going to give the other boys, but we'll see what happens. Hey, hello there! He seems like an excited type, so I'm gonna go with that. I turned to the door and saw a red-headed guy smiling in my direction. I uneasily looked back. Nobody was behind me. So yes, he must have been speaking to me. Mm, hello, I'm new in St. Michael's. The boy chuckled amused. The suitcase and the fact that I haven't gotten met you in the five years that I've been here gave you away easily. I tried to smile back, feeling clumsy and awkward. It ended up being more of a grimace than a true smile. So, what's your name, new boy? Uh, I'm Alex White. The boy extended his right hand in my direction, and I hurried to shake it. I hope my palm wasn't sweaty, was it? Damn, nobody my age shook hands in my village. This school was definitely too formal for me, but at least this guy seemed nice. My name is Montgomery Johnson. You can call me Monty. In fact, please do. My bed is this one. This one beside yours? So I'm your neighbor! The door opened, and two other guys appeared at the threshold. Okay, these are the other- Damien! We got Monty, Damien, I don't know who the other guy is. Hmm, so the rumors are right. We do have new faces this term. The young man who had spoken was a dark-haired and had a bigger build than me and Monty, and in general looked older and more mature than us. His eyes looked intently at me with an amused spark, and before I could open my mouth to introduce myself, Monty spoke for me. This is Alex! We've just met! Alex, this is Damien! He waved, and the other boy half hidden behind Damien. Oh, and this one's Rick. He's the clever one of the group, so I hope you'll accept a study with us this term too, will you? The boy shrugged, avoiding our eyes. He was very tall and thin, and after feeling so awkward the whole day, I marveled to meet someone who looked still sheer than me. That thought made me smile a bit, and I reached out of my hand to shake theirs. To my surprise, Damien took it after hastening for a short moment, raising an eyebrow as if the situation was oddly entertaining to him. The way he shook my hand, looking at me with a crooked grin on his face, made me think he was making fun of me. Perhaps shaking hands was only normal for Monty after all? How would I know? Slightly annoyed, I turned to Rick, who passed by my side towards his wardrobe without a single word or glance in my direction. Hmm, such nice roommates. Before I started to fume, Monty laughed, shaking his head. Please don't be upset. I'm sure you'll be used to their antics very soon. It's almost dinner time. Do you want me to show you the school afterwards? Uh, that would be perfect, actually. But we're having dinner so early? Monty and Damien chuckled. Huh, so you didn't know. We take the monastack vows when we arrive here. Getting ready for tons of church time, getting up before dawn and going to sleep in sunset. Man, what kind of school is this? Like, it makes me think it's like a Catholic one or something. <laughs> oh, shut up, it's not so bad. But it's true, we have to work hard at St. Michael's. Let's go! I will explain the scheduling uh, while we go to the dinner room. The three of us followed Monty out of the bedroom and crossed the number of corridors for the stairs. I tried to memorize the way, although I started to be afraid of getting lost, often in the labyrinth of wooden corridors and doors. It couldn't be helped, I guess. I was stuck in following Monty everywhere until I made myself familiar with the layout of the building. The lessons start at 8 o'clock and breakfast is served half past 7, but there is a compulsory religious service at 7, so we usually get up half past 6. At 6, if you want to have a bath in the morning, since the bathrooms in the evening are rather packed. Oh. Also, the best time to get study room for ourselves is before the service, so we often get up at 5 or past 4 during exam- Jesus! Like, how are you guys gonna get up at 4.30? <laughs> I stared at him. He was smiling, as if it was the most normal thing to do in the world. You're kidding me. Eh, he isn't. In fact, Rick takes our study group very seriously, so he must follow his rules down to the letter. He's very strict with the schedules, but I swear that if you follow his directions, you will succeed in all your subjects with an A+. Baffled, I glanced towards our silent roommate and followed them inside the dining hall. I was already missing my old school, where you went to the back of your home every afternoon. Didn't you just sweat to pass all your subjects? Come on, Alex! Hurry up, or we won't get a table! Uh, yeah, sorry. 
I sat beside Monty, and our two other roommates went to sit in front of us. Almost immediately, a senior student started reading a passage from the Bible, while the rest of us waited in silence. I started to space out, but the reading was so short that the plates were served at once. The food was good, at least, although it was a bit early for me, I wasn't so hungry. Where did you used to study, Alex? Oh, until now, I've always attended my village's school. It's in Surrey. Hmm, never been there. My family lives in the north. You aren't missing anything, I thought. My village is really small and ordinary, so I didn't think it was worth commenting about it on onto Monty. Do you have any brothers or sisters? Uh, yeah, I have four elder siblings, three brothers and one sister, but they're way older than me. They are all married and living on their own homes. Oh, really? I'm the same. I'm the youngest of six, and I have already two nephews and three nieces. I smiled wildly at this. What a coincidence. I also have four nieces and one nephew. That makes five, same as you. Monty grinned and hooked an arm around my neck, pulling me closer into a vice grip. I kind of kind of like, you know, Monty, he's kind of cute. I kind of like him. I might do his root first. We'll see. I struggled a little, but without any heat, it was a little embarrassing to be treated so familiar by a guy I just met, but it was also warm. One of my fears about coming to the St. Michael's was feeling isolated after all, so I was glad to have found someone so friendly in my first day of school. I turned to our roommate, in the pantomime of asking for help to get rid of Monty just to see Damien laughing out loud, and Rick staring at me with an oddly serious face. He looked aside when he caught me glancing at him. I cleared my throat and slipped from Monty's grip, suddenly uncomfortable. Damien started to talk with Rick about some schoolmates I hadn't met, so I turned to Monty in, qui in a quiet voice. Is Rick always so shy? Monty seemed surprised by my question. Rick? I wouldn't call him shy, no. Why are you asking? I didn't know what to say, so my first impression of Rick was wrong then. Maybe he's just kind of like, I don't think he's quiet, maybe he's the type of person who observes first, and then once they get to know you, they're really talkative. That's kind of like how I am. If I don't know someone, I don't actually talk to them that much until I'm more comfortable with them, then I'm, I'm loud. I'm a pretty loud person. <laughs> so I think that's what uh, Rick is doing. I just think so. Perhaps he was simply upset because of my presence? That option made me feel disappointed. We were bound to share a bedroom for the entire year, after all, and it seemed Rick was in charge of the study group, so if he didn't want me there... I shuddered at the thought of endless hours studying on my own, with an added difficulty of having no one to else and having no one else to partner with for the group projects. Are you thinking that he doesn't like you or something like that? I didn't dare to nod. Was I so transparent? Monty laughed and bumped his shoulder against mine. Don't overthink it like that! He's simply a serious guy! Be kind to him and I assure you he won't have a problem with you. I hope so, I thought, silently relieved, but I caught in the corner of my eye how Rick was staring at me again. I pretended I didn't notice this time and pushed Monty's hand off my shoulder. When we finished the having dinner, Monty took me around to see the school, as if he previously offered while Damien and Rick went to the our back door bedroom. In the right wing, we have a gym and in the church, and in this main wing, on this floor, is our classroom. The left wing, as you already know, is where dorms are located. Ours is on the second floor as well. What else would you like to see? The church, the gym, our classroom, back to the dorm. Do we go to the classroom? I don't know. Oh, I should have guessed our classroom is locked. But don't worry, you'll see it first thing in the morning. He sighed. I looked around in the darkness, feeling uneasy. Monty was familiar with these corridors, but I wasn't, so I could only make up an unknown shapes. It was a little unnerving not knowing where I was or how to get back to my bedroom. Plus, there were an additional issue of tripping over something in the darkness. You're not afraid of the dark, are you? Of course not. Stop smirking. You, couldn't, you can't possibly see me smirking. Not that I need to. It was a stop already. Okay, let's go to the church. I guess in order. I don't know. It was bigger than I imagined, but also airy and welcoming. I expected a darker and menacing place. I didn't know why. Well, I was glad to be wrong. Monty showed me around, speaking in whispers that traveled from wall to wall in a muffled echo. Alright. Um, church again? Oh, that, I think that's a glitch. Okay, uh, Jim. Wow, it's pretty big. We didn't have one in my previous school. Monty looked amused. I bet you won't be so enthusiastic once you get acquainted with all the torturous instruments that our teacher calls gymnastic equipment. And I guess we can go back to our dorm. Can we both go back to our bedroom? I have seen enough to, for today. Wait, there's another place I want to show you. Follow me upstairs. Let's go see the upper floor. What's in it? There used to be an infirmary, but they closed it years ago. Now if you get sick, you must ask the housemaster for aspirin and go to your bedroom or you ask him to go to the doctor up from town. But this is an interesting part. There are a lot of rumors running about the old infirmary. He grinned in a conspiracy tone and I couldn't help but raise my eyebrow. What, there's ghosts? Can't see a damn thing. 
Don't be so wimpy. Do you need me to tell you the story of the infirmary or not? I sighed. Do I have a choice? Monty grabbed my hand in an almost absolute darkness and intertwined his fingers with mine. This is kind of cute. <laughs> I was glad. I wasn't very fond of not being able to see where I, he was or where he was heading. So at least this way I knew exactly his location. The nurses in St. Michael used to be old nuns for the nearby covent, the one on the outskirts of town. But the last one who came was a young nun who had recently taken her vows. Let me guess, she was a beautiful maid, wasn't she? No, she wasn't wealthy or pretty. It seems she was rather ordinary in every way. She was the daughter of a merchant who had a small store in town. Just that. She seemed to be married to a young foreign merchant who used to trade her father, and it seemed to she was happy with the prospect. But after all the preparations for the day of the wedding arrived, the groom didn't come. So she still waited all day in the church in her white dress, surrounded by flowers. At sunset, her family took her back home, and although she must have been heartbroken, she didn't shed a tear. She was so ashamed that she waited to, she wanted to hide her face from the world forever, so the next day, she left her father's home and entered the covent. Oh, poor girl. I followed Monty up some stairs, so wood was dry and old, creaked under our feet. It was so dark as before, and I could only say where Monty was because of the restroom where his voice came from. Okay! I tightened my grip on his hand just to be sure not to lose him. But she was so gloomy at the covent that they decided to send her here. Perhaps they thought that she would be happier making herself useful, or that she would find someone to change and change her mind. And she did? Yeah, she did. He made a long and uncomfortable pause. Soon, a teacher started to court her, and he didn't stop until he turned her into his lover. What he didn't tell her was that he was already married. Oh, a scumbag! When she eventually found out, she broke up with him in rage. Afterwards, she got really depressed. Don't tell me this is one of those stories where the nun killed herself and now she returns to the school as a ghost. Suddenly, there was a hand on my nape, and Monty's breath touched my ear, warm and ticklish, enticing a shiver running up my spine. Oh no, she had a madness outbreak and took three students' lives before taking her own. I gasped and moved away, and his hand slipped from my fingers. I felt a rustling of clothes and suddenly a cool rush of air around me. Monty? Monty, where are you? Don't you dare leave without me! I stepped forward to meet the wall, cursing, and I turned and tried to keep the wall, uh, walking a wall of, uh, while following the wall. A light female laughter sounded somewhere in front of me. Freezing, I turned again in the opposite direction. I knew my imagination was playing tricks on my mind. Where were the stairs? Where, and where was Monty? Monty, this isn't funny! Another sound, a soft bump, came from the some meters ahead of me. Cursing, I stopped walking. That must have been Monty. That must have been him. I was sure. Then, why couldn't I dare ask out loud if it was him? Oh no. <laughs> I thought this was supposed to be a cute game! Why is it horror? A cold sweat was starting to dampen in the back of my shirt, and my hands were trembling. I shook my head. No! There wasn't anything supernatural there! I just had to keep on walking until I found the stairs. I just... Another knock, this time louder, and I utter a muffled cry. I could feel presences. I couldn't see anything, but the air around me moved. I glued my back to the wall and closed my eyes tightly. My knees buckled, and I suddenly found myself kneeling on the ground. Oh, come on, guys! It's gone too far! There was laughter, definitely a male one, and then when I opened my eyes, I found Monty, Damon, and Rick in front of me. Monty had a lit lamp, and he was looking at me with concern and look in his eyes. Damien, the bastard, was laughing out loud until there were tears in the corner of his eyes. Rick's face was unreadable, but under his serious features, I swear I could see a hint of embarrassment. Wistful thinking, perhaps. Monty helped me to my feet and threw a ferocious glance at Damien. Look, he's trembling! I told you this was a bad idea! Whatever you say, mate. He shrugged, still grinning. I'm really sorry, Alex. Damon thought it would be fun to do a little prank on you. You know, as you were the new one here. I nodded uneasy. I had never felt so embarrassed in my whole life. So it was like a hazing. <laughs> I tried to play it off, pretending to be mad at them while I followed them back to our bedroom. Instead, I was only half mad at myself. Was I so gullible in the bit of darkness and the ghost story turned my knees into jelly? I had been certainly too spoiled and too overprotected. I needed to toughen up a lot if I wanted to survive in a school full of other guys who weren't my family. There were no one else who could protect me from then on. I had only myself to count on. Still, I thought to myself as I faded into sleep a little later, I was glad to have Monty. Although he had taken a part in the prank, he looked truly ashamed afterwards, so perhaps I could count him as my friend? I think so. I think it's the easiest one to assume that Monty would be, like, the kindest one out of the group, you know? So I think it's safe to say he is the sweet one. The other two, well, I didn't want to think about them. Within, with that in mind, I fell asleep on my first day at St. Michael's. 
Okay, guys, I'm gonna end this first episode right here. So, I actually want to hear from you guys. Would you guys like me to continue this as a let's play? And, um, considering we, we kind of met all the roots that we're gonna do. These are the three guys that, um, Alice can date. But I'm not entirely sure which one I want to go first. I kind of want to go with Mondi because he seems like a, a sweetheart, honestly, I really do. But uh, I kind of want to hear from you guys, too. Who do you think Alex should date first? Please leave a comment down below letting me know, or like letting me know who's your favorite character so far and what you think. Um, like I said at the beginning of this episode, if you guys would like to get the game yourself, I'll leave a link in the description so you can check it out. Um, but so far, I'm actually really liking it. It's cute so far. I don't know exactly how old the other characters are. I know Alex is 16, but I'm not sure about the other boys. Even though Damien seemed to be older, I think he's still the same age, he just looks old. But uh, regardless of that, if you guys enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell button so you know when I upload the next episode of A Hand in the Darkness. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye! She doesn't think I'm old enough to get hit yet. What age are you supposed to get hit at then? What? <laughs> I don't think he should ever be able to hit me. I don't think- is it okay if we sit a little closer? <laughs> this guy's too pure, what the heck? Sure. I shuffle over.